is MP is above genetics. So on top of genetics. No, you're not gonna be expressed, meaning a gene is not going to express, means it's not gonna be activated. It has the power to really turn off all the bad genes and turn on all the good genes, uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, the SNPs, inhale or eat or absorb like toxins or foods that we eat or how much sleep we get. Hello everyone and welcome back to another whole psychology method video. I am Lita Sportel at litashealing.com and founder of the whole wellness method. And this video you're about to watch is a mini video of the actual full length video, which means it's about a 10 to 15 minute long video of the actual full length that I've done. And the reason is that I want you to kind of um, try it out, get a little taste of it and see if it speaks to you. See if it is uh, concepts that you want to dive deeper into. See if it touches your heart. See if you resonate with it and if you feel inspired by these concepts. And if you do and you want more of these, then join my program of the Psychology Pillar uh, that I have a series of these videos and you can get a lot more on that. Today we are going to talk about epigenetics and it's a topic that I talk about in my functional medicine videos uh, quite a bit and I think that it's um, a topic that uh, everybody should be talking about because it is um, a newer conversation that um, the conventional paradigm, uh, whether it's the medical model or just in general the way we've been uh, trained to think is that uh, genetics affect us um, in a pretty deterministic way. And if we have inherited certain genes from our parents or our ancestors, that we are kind of doomed to develop certain health conditions or even certain personality traits or even certain behaviors, certain mental health problems, and so on and so forth. And so the discussion about epigenetics, which is epi is above genetics, so on top of genetics, uh, this discussion is something that I, I think it's crucial, uh, especially at a time where we do tend to point our fingers to external factors that are beyond our control, like our genes, and that we uh, we tend to be very, um, to have a, a, an attitude of uh, powerlessness um, that says that, you know, there's not much I can do. The reason we want to break this habit of, of believing in these statements is because science says so. And because it is the old dogma that said that genetic uh, determinism, that said that once you have a gene for cancer, uh, for breast cancer, once you have the gene for Alzheimer's disease, once you have a gene for obesity, uh, once you have, you know, or if, if anxiety runs in your family, whatever it is, um, that, that deterministic view has been debunked by science and by multiple studies, valid scientific studies that show that you can override whatever your genetic code is, you can override that with purely epigenetic factors. So you can have a really bad gene that you inherited, or that is something you cannot change, you have a bad gene or a number of bad genes, but you can influence which of those are going to be turned on and which are going to be turned off. But yeah, while you cannot change that, what you can change is which of these genes are expressed and which of these genes stay silent. 
So what we're finding through the study of epigenetics, above genetics, controlling genetics, is that there's many, many factors that can influence this sequence, this genetic sequence, and tell it, no, you're not going to be expressed, meaning a gene is not going to express, means it's not going to be activated, means it's not going to produce a protein or an enzyme, which means it's, it's in that specific cell that has that specific gene. This protein will not be produced. Diet, if you use the right diet, it has the power to really turn off all the bad genes and turn on all the good genes to give you the life that you want and that is not the life that your parents had or the health problems that your parents had and um, or that everybody else around you is struggling with. So diet is the hugest foundational layer or epigenetic factor. That's why it's the no number one in um, my whole wellness method process. Now the second layer or the second epigenetic factor is sleep and our ability to truly rest. So if your sleep is not how it needs to be, it's going to be activating the negative, the bad genes, let's say, the genes that we don't want to be active. I'm not going to go into the process of how that happens, again, because this is just a, a review of the different epigenetic factors. Now, if your sleep is really good and rejuvenating, and um, and and the sleep that we, the body needs to detoxify to process everything and to um, heal and repair the cells and to uh, fight all the infections and for the immune system to really repair and um, do what it needs to do, then you are going to be impacting the the genes that are going to be protective and are going to be preventing you from having the conditions that maybe your your family has struggled with. That was the second epigenetic factor or layer. The third one is hormones. Hormones is a vast topic. Um, I'm not going to go in, get into that um, right now, but it, it, it has four different sections to it. It's the, the blood sugar and insulin. It's the adrenals. And cortisol, it's the um, thyroid, and then it's the sex hormones. So all those, in the way in the way they're balanced, if they're too high or too low or off balance with each other, if you have too much cortisol, you're going to be degenerating your body and in a catabolic state. And so, if you don't have enough thyroid hormone. You're not gonna, your cells aren't going to be operating the way they need to and your genes are not going to be activated the way they need to. Number four is the immune system and the inflammatory system in general. So another huge topic. But um, making sure that chronic infections are dealt with, making sure that chronic inflammatory processes in the body are dealt with, all of these factors are going to protect you from the bad genes being expressed because if the body is fighting chronic infections uh, and if the body is fighting chronic inflammation then the body is constantly receiving in, in that genetic um, code it's receiving the information to turn on the bad genes through a process that is very very complex and just beyond the point of this video to explain but you want to deal with chronic inflammation and chronic infections because if, if you have that on the background, it's going to be working against you in terms of which genes are being expressed. The, four, the fifth one is digestion. The fifth epigenetic factor is digestion. Um, digestion um, is anything from um, what infections could be going on in the digestive tract, leaky gut, like I mentioned earlier, inflammation, um, and many in the microbiome balance. Like how do you have a good balance of the good and the bad bacteria so that the bad bacteria don't go and turn on the bad genes? 
So it's the same concept, digestion being the fifth epigenetic factor, is you really want to have digestion working um, on your favor so that the bad genes stay silent and the good genes get expressed. And when I say bad and good and, and good is obviously because I'm trying to simplify this discussion, it's a lot more complex than that because when we do talk about uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, the SNPs, uh, when we talk about those, we see that even bad genes or how uh, Dr. Ben Lynch talks about that as dirty genes in his book, Dirty Genes, which is an amazing book. They are bad because they don't help us in certain ways, but in some ways they are, they could be uh, helpful, but what matters is how you express them, which ones you turn on and at which points in your life. So it's a complex subject, uh, but I am trying to simplify it by just saying bad genes and good genes and, and having that discussion in that way. The sixth epigenetic factor is detoxification, your ability to detoxify from toxins or how many toxins you already have accumulated in your body. So uh, toxins are going to turn on really, really bad genes uh, that could be producing um, cancer and a lot of other inflammatory conditions in the body that are really, really not good for us. So talking about genetics, well, if you, if your mother was in the, in the lead generation and had mercury fillings in her mouth and she gave birth to you, it could be that now you have a lot of lead and mercury in your uh, system, which is now also predisposing you to certain conditions that she maybe struggled with because she was also having all this toxic burden uh, in her body. The seventh factor is energy, energy and exercise. And energy could be um, how well are the mit mitochondria in our cells able to produce energy and therefore how able is the cell on a cellular level able to produce the right proteins through the genes and, and do what it needs to do to um, uh, you know, multiply and, and repair and remove waste and how well the, the, on a cellular level things are working. But energy could also be in terms of quantum physics and the fact that we've been talking about with the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza how on a subatomic level really we are all energy. So all these factors um, in terms of energy and exercise or lack of exercise or over exercising are also going to affect which genes are being expressed. So we talked diet, sleep and rest, hormones, immune system, digestion, detoxification, energy and exercise. The eighth one is the nervous system, the brain and the neurotransmitter that neurotransmitters that it produces. Uh, the brain and the neurotransmitters also affect which genes are going to be expressed and which are not because they are things that are happening in our body um, through things that we inhale or eat or absorb like toxins or foods that we eat or how much sleep we get or um, what hormones what the hormones are doing and what they're responding to, what infections we have, what our brain is doing, uh, what the cell, cell is doing. So it's all a uh, conversation about certain things that the external environment is affecting us and uh, certain things that are going on on a biochemical level inside of our bodies. The conversation changes when we look at ninth and tenth layer or the ninth and tenth uh, epigenetic factors because those are the, the ninth one is psychology emotional and mental health and the tenth one is spirituality 
and it's the conversation I'm having uh, with you uh, when I discuss the Course in Miracles. So you might be wondering, well, what does spirituality have to do with genetic expression? What does um, psychology have to do with genetic expression? I mean, I get how it is that toxins can uh, turn on the bad genes and cause cancer, but I don't get how it is that spirituality can uh, turn on um, good genes or how psychology um, or, or being in, in the wrong uh, mind or the wrong psychological state can actually go into my genetic code and produce um, bad, uh, inactivate the bad genes. So not many people have been talking about those two epigenetic factors. Uh, functional medicine focuses a lot on the layers that I already mentioned, the eight layers. And um, now lately more and more research is coming out to show that the last two layers, the psychology and the spirituality, have an equal, if not more important role in which genes we express. I really hope that you have found at least one thing from this video that has benefited you or that has inspired you in some way. And if you think of somebody else that might also benefit from this, please share it with them. I really hope that you found this video valuable and that it has inspired you in some way. And listen to your heart. If you feel that you want more of these and that you want the actual full length videos and that you want more neuroscience and you want more of the psychology and the Course in Miracles and the Dr. Joe Dispenza work and all these different things that I provide you, then uh, come and join me inside the Psychology Pillar program and I hope to see you there. Leaving you in whole wellness. Bye-bye.